The scripture I want to start off with, uh, just a review, is Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. Remain in the book of Genesis, please. In Matthew 24, 14, it says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a testimony to every nation, and then the end will come. Jesus was very specific about what we are supposed to be preaching. Then in Matthew 4, 17, is his inaugural address. The first public statement made by Jesus was this statement in his ministry. It's found in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. Very important verse. This is the first public statement made by Jesus when he began his ministry. He began with this word, repent. Repent means what? To change your mind. It also means to change the way you think or the way you've been conditioned to think. Change your thinking. Then he says, because the kingdom of heaven has arrived. The King James Version says, is at hand. The original Greek written there is, has arrived. So he was saying, repent or change your thinking because a kingdom of God has come to earth, it has arrived. Look at the connection between the two statements. One, he says, change your thinking. Why? Because the kingdom of God is here. In other words, before the kingdom of God came back to earth, he says, your thinking was okay. But now that it's here, you've got to change the way you think. The word repent doesn't just mean to change your thinking, but it means to reverse it completely. In other words, to repent means to turn completely around in the opposite direction, in your thinking. Which means that to live in the kingdom of God, you've got to think the opposite to the way you've been taught. The kingdom of God takes everything that's been right side up and turns it upside down. So to live in the kingdom of God, you've got to think and act and believe completely opposite to what you've been taught. This is why repent is so important. Because repent is not feeling sorry about what you've done. Repent means to change your mind. Why? Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is the man. So if your thinking doesn't change, the man doesn't change. So Christ says to live in this kingdom, you've got to change your thinking, which will change your life, will change your mind. I think his first statement implies that the kingdom of God is a contrasting kingdom to the one you were born in and lived in all your life. You've got to think differently to survive in the kingdom of God. Let's take a look at some of the thoughts concerning this kingdom. Number one, God's original plan was to extend his heavenly kingdom on earth through mankind. That's God's original purpose and still is. Number two, God's purpose was to establish a family of sons and not servants. And number three, God's purpose was to establish a kingdom of sons and not subjects. God didn't want to rule over slaves. He wanted to have a family that shared his rulership. And that's a different concept of kingdoms. And then number four, God's purpose originally was to establish a commonwealth of citizens and not Christians. I want to contrast these two terms because Christians are religious people but citizens are legal people. God did not want religious people. He wanted to have legal people, people who have a legal right to be a part of his family. So you will find Jesus distinguishing these two all through his teachings. In the book of John chapter 8 in my mind, I see it now going through my spirit. In eight, chapter 8, Jesus said that famous verse that you all know about. It says, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Well, the verse just before that says that the servant is not a part of the house, but the son belongs to the house. Very important declaration he makes. In other words, if you are a, a, a servant of the Lord, that means you are not really a part of the house. You're just kind of doing things in the house. But he says the son is in the house. He's a part of the house. He's a part of the family. God wanted to establish a citizenry and not a religious movement. And finally, God's original plan was his desire to have relationship and not religion. Religion means to search. Relationship means you found him. Once you become a believer in Christ and receive his Holy Spirit, 
you are no longer a religious person. Religious people are looking for the Father God. Those who have found him have returned home and they are sons. This is expressed clearly by Jesus in the story of the, of the prodigal son, which again is an important story because it begins with the spirit of a son who left home, became a servant to the slavery spirit out there, and then came back and his desire was not to become a son but to come to become a servant. Jesus tells a story that the father ignored that and said, my son is home. So God doesn't want servants nor slaves. He wants sons. He wants relationship. Here's where it all begins, the kingdom attitude. The kingdom concept begins in the mind of God. In the book of Genesis 1.26, God creates the human being and he tells us why. It says in the book of Genesis 1.26, and God said, let us create man in our own image and in our likeness and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle of the field, and over all the earth, and over everything that creeps upon the ground." End quote. This verse is the key to kingdom thinking. The word dominion, if you check in my notes there, is in capital letters. Why? Because the, the center of this sentence is the word dominion. God expresses his desire for you, and for every one of the six billion people on earth right now, and that is for you to have dominion over the earth. God did not create you to attend church services or to have prayer meetings or to even have worship songs. God's intent was for you to have dominion over this planet. It's clear in his original mandate. I want to call this the dominion mandate. Write that down, please. The dominion mandate. That's what this particular verse is all about. God's mandate to man is to dominate the earth. That's God's intent and it never changes. The intent is another word for purpose, which means God's purpose is for mankind to dominate the earth and that's it. It never says to dominate heaven, God says to dominate the earth. Dominion is important here then. Let's find out a little bit more about what the dominion spirit is. The program of God then is simple. One, to rule the visible world from the invisible world through the invisible spirit living in the visible body on the visible earth. That's God's program. In other words, God wants to rule the seen world from the unseen world where he is by living in the unseen spirit of man in the seen body that is on the seen earth. God's program then was to rule the invisible from the invisible through the invisible living in the visible on the visible. Is that indivisible? <laughs> Put it another way. God's program was to have his kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven through his children, which is a family of sons and offspring. That's God's program. Very simple, very straightforward.